What's going on, everybody? Hope you're doing well. My name is Lamont. I've been a full-time trader for seven years now, part of the Chart Guys team for more than half of that time, where I head up our futures room and our swing report. In this video, we will go over some of the tickers in the hype markets uh, and also give you some overall market coverage, hit you with some trade zones, and of course, you know, talk about the implications of the prior week. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so starting off with NVDA here. So NVDA is still looking fine. Semis and NVDA is still looking fine. So despite the fact that the uh, market, the sellers in the overall market are starting to advance a little bit, our bell leather, the semis are still being very durable. So for NVDA, as long as you're holding over 823.94, then the change of this breakout has, yet, has not yet been negated. And as long as you're holding over, let's say 823, 823 then the gap is not filled so as long as you have incomplete gap fill as long as you don't uh negate the change of this breakout by getting back under 823.94 buyers are still very comfortable here for nvda just looking for a weekly higher low anything over a rinky dink one here 662.48 good for one and like we were talked about in the past even if, if bigger picture even holding over 505.48 would be no no big deal that's like a 40 percent drawdown from here and that would that would Structurally, that would still be fine. So NVDA buyers looking okay here. All right, I think we had a trade zone. Uh, I think it may have dipped into it. Okay, so a dip into the trade zone, and this trade zone is just based off of this structure and a potential incomplete fill. So if you initiated in here, the bounce at this point, chop it up, throw your stop for the rest under this low and see if they'll confirm out of here. And you can keep using this zone as long as there's no acceptance under 791.91 this is a very reasonable trade zone it's still reasonable under 791.91 but it's you know it's 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 much sketchier there if you are going to take trades down here you should be chopping it up before 79191 i personally would just wait like I, if, if we do come down and like trade through here and i don't have a position yet i would wait for a move back over 791.91 to to be to do anything else sometimes i'll be aggressive off the value area low but for the most part i prefer sticking with the uh, moves over the pocs so that's it. Space for a daily higher low. Anything over 830.22 is going to be good for one. And that is really it. Very healthy consolidation for NVDA. SMCI is a little bit weaker. This is the key daily demand zone. It held initially, but now you have this local daily supply, which has broken, uh, which uh, sellers have broken down from. And so this should actually be here technically. Um, I don't even care about this right now. No, no big deal. So the daily chart is now bearish, lower highs and lower lows. Key lower high resistance is at 945.36. But what I really care about is 860.46. Right now, it's obviously a battle between this area of supply and this area of demand. Bigger picture, still, these buyers are actually still okay. Right? They're still just looking for a weekly higher low to be set. Although this is like a, yeah, this was never set, right? Because we didn't break over this can candle at 1147.79. So this was never a weekly higher low uh, actually being set here. So we're still looking for that. Key support, though, is 855. And this can go all the way back down to 357 and still structurally be okay. So that's like a 60% decline from here. Yeah. So, you know, bigger picture, these buyers are totally fine. Okay. If you start finding acceptance under 850.46, okay, that would be problematic. So I think our trade zone is set up as such, just giving us a little bit of wiggle room down to where this low was, basically, as long as we don't negate this more or less one way trade uh don't enter this kind of a uh, no volume area then it's pretty reasonable that these buyers should be trying to cut back up to this uh, area of supply it's hard to ignore this is potentially a bit of a head and shoulders pattern here and the way that i like to look at the head and shoulders patterns is simply as long as this the supply sitting on top for the head is resistant then i would say that that pattern is worth watching okay so let's that's pretty much it <laughs> um, for SMCI. Okay, so this is uh, this is very notable here, right? Bitcoin. Uh, this is right now. This is Saturday, 9 p.m. So we just not just we recently, maybe a few hours ago, got the news of that Iranian attack uh, towards I think northern Israel. Um, so this was a negative reaction from it, and the alts are getting punished a lot more. So like you can tell because the dominance chart is ripping, right? And so if the dominance chart is ripping and is strong, then that means that on, and, but Bitcoin is uh, falling, then that means that the alts are, are probably feeling harder, which is definitely the case, right? ETH uh, definitely already made a new low and it never, it never made a new high, right? It never broke to all time high. So in that sense, it's all, you know, it's already showing us that relative weakness. But um, for Bitcoin though, 
it's it's all still all about this guy, right? 61003.36. As long as this structure is supported, then these higher prices relative to, to this structure are being accepted, and this structure represents the prior all-time high. So as long as they're holding over 61003.36, it's 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 no no problem. You, you see what I'm saying? Every week you hear me say that I like this play, right? Like you have to be, you know, at the station ready for it. You can set an alert if you like. I did have an alert for that, I think. Yeah, horizontal rate. Um, I just set it so that it gave me that alert once every 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 candle, uh, every time it crosses per candle, and and so then you can always be prepared to you know assess the situation live. I I wasn't, um, but 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 the alert did give make you know create some potential for me to, to come in and trade it. I was you know it's a weekend so. <laughs> but anyway, the, the play that I love, you know, as you've heard me say many times before, and this is your first time, if it is your first time, welcome, but it's a, a pass under the POC with no fall, right? Because if you pass under the point of control, don't see fall through, move back over, that affirms that structure is demand. And the first place they should try to get to is the value area high. So if we zoom in, I, I, I would not be surprised if like on the smaller time frames you did see some stall. There. Honestly, not, not that much stall. I, I, I assume there would be more stall there. Not really. So now look what's happening, right? It's a battle for the value area high of this structure. So from here, if these buyers can find acceptance now back over 63629.56, bring the sigh of relief, no change, just hanging out, going sideways. The alts are not, not, not quite the same, right? Like, you know, some of our leaders are getting punished right now. Yeah, the alts are definitely doing a lot worse. Okay, so that's pretty much it for Bitcoin. No real major change. Ethereum, notable weakness. Daily charts bearish, lower highs and lower lows. Key lower high resistance is 3617.97. These sellers should be trying to come back down here. This guy, so that's this guy from uh, 2021 in uh, the Q2 2021, or yeah, Q2 2021. Holds price here, a battle for it here. They reject from this guy. Right, which was important here, here, and here. And then this structure then becomes problematic until we come all the way back around. It's a battle for the value area low. It's a battle for the point of control. Why do I care about this guy? Because as long as you're holding over this guy, you open up this kind of price action, right? So as of right now, we're focused on this structure and this structure, which dictated all of this price action, because now that we're back under this guy, see over here, and over this guy, we should expect this kind of a fight now, right? And so next key level, again, that's going to be 2799.87, so 2800, and then 2570.27. As long as they're holding over 2570.27, we should get back to expecting this kind of price action, okay? So that's it. Lots of space for a daily lower high. And so, you know, if you're a seller, you can be lying in wait over here. These uh, buyers create no change without getting back over 3202.80 as step number one, okay? CCJ, so CCJ did pretty much what we were, oh, uh, actually that's, uh, I'm getting confused now. This was, uh, this was not, we did not share this setup last week because it hadn't set up yet. But if you are, hang on a second, I, I should have that tab open. Oh, it's not. Um, so just to show you guys, you know, what's the swing report, if you, obviously these videos, I, I, I hope are very informational, um, but if you want even more assistance, even more guidance, Check out this room report. Links in the description below. I'll show you what we we're talking about here. So um, this was on uh, 4.11. So it was in pre-market at 9 a.m. on the 11th. Just talking about it's you know positioned really well for potential breakouts. So let me just run, run, you know, walk through this for you guys um, to show you how we get it done. Because on the 11th, we are here, right? And so in the morning of the 11th, on the morning of the 11th, we are here, right? We're set to open up above the prior day's high. And this is potentially a daily bull flag. So we're set to open up here above the prior day's high. That means then that we can use these structures from the 10th as a trade zone, right? Because as long as the, the sellers can't trade through these structures on the 10th, then they're going to try to make a new high. If they're gonna to try to make a new high, they should try to get to 5022. And then if they can make it over 5022, they should try to get to 52.69. Now, all of these levels, all of that trade plan was laid out beforehand. So again, this is the morning of the 11th. I'll give you guys the trade zone, right? If we open up here, this is the zone that I'm using, right? So we get one fill, one fill, right? Uh, oh, I guess it's gone now. I must have like adjusted them. This? Nope. 
I must have been this guy. I must have made some adjustments, but you can, you know, clearly see from oops, from here, right? It's this structure and this structure that I use for the trade zone, right? That's this guy and this guy. And alerts go out as well for every step of the way, right? I, I let you know, okay, that's the trade zone. Uh, we'll be looking for to test 50, 22. And then uh, out half, that's, so that's, I send out this alert on somewhere around noon because at that point we had gotten to the point of control at 50.22, that's over here, right? So we, 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 we take that first exit and then I let you guys know, okay, the next exit I'm looking for is at 52.69 and the high of that day was like 52.65 or something, 52.64 was the high of this day. So I actually did not get that limit order. I was I was streaming. I was streaming. Up, I always stream Friday mornings for our community, and so I just put out that alert right around ten oh nine to let you guys know. Hey, listen, I missed my limit order, and so I just marketed it out somewhere under. It was like slightly under. It was like ten oh you know ten ten. So it was you know still very close to the high of the day. Ten 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 is this candle here, this candle. Okay, so yeah. So if you guys are interested in getting those kinds of alerts um you know ideas and regular alerts pushed out to you guys it's i mean like it's it's i i cannot think of any other service that will that will you know do it like this give you the exact area where we're, we're looking for that trade this is what we're exactly going to do and then as we do things post i mean i don't I, they're probably out there but i i've never come across them so um if that's something you're interested in just to learn the ropes with along with us trade with us then um you know uh give us Singapore a shot and not financial advice, I guess. <laughs> it's really just an educational um, uh, publication, but obviously the things that we're learning is a trick. So anyway, CCJ here, uh, let me hide this again. So CCJ here, uh, by the way, one, 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 one more point that I want to mention is that the risk on this trade was only 1%, you know, so it's very, very asymmetrical, right? Just to get to the, uh, the first target, 5022, is a 2.4 R trade, and then get to our, our further target is a six archer, you know, so some food for thought. Okay, so daily higher low set at 46.94. This is super, super key area here. All right, so it's this guy here being tested right now from uh, 2007. So that's the supply that's being tested right now. And you can see very clear POC rejection, POC rejection, POC rejection, now value area high rejection. So these buyers then, the goal for these buyers then is to hold over 49.26 from here. If they can hold over 49.26 and get back over 50.43, they'll breathe a sigh of relief and it's pretty much right back to being constructive. So the goal then, uh, if they can't get that done and the sellers can defend against 50.43, key support 46.94. If new lows under 46.94, then eyes on 44.47. All right, this is still a fine chart. You know, even though we pull back, it's high volume. They're still fine as long as they're holding over 49.26 defensively. Okay. If they want to get back on the offense, they got to get over 50.22, 52.69. All right. Okay. So, Dan, not looking so good. Like we were talking about last week, the fact that they kept on getting caught up at the value area high of this demand zone, of this demand zone, and not being able to make it up to the value area low of this supply zone, that was a red flag. Did, could you see that structure just now? I, I'm, not, I'm never sure if my face is blocking it. I guess I could move it to like this bottom right side. I'll mess with it later. Um, okay, so problematic here, right? That they can't get over the value area high. They failed to get over the value area low. So if you were using this trade zone, uh, we recommended you chop it up at the value area high, throw your stop under this low, and then see what the market will give you with the rest. These sellers should be trying to get back down to 39.98 again. This trade zone is still very reasonable. The low, this yellow dashed line is just the high of this lower structure that's within this big guy. So I just figure, all right, well, we only really want to be interested in this as long as we're holding over the POC. So we'll give it a little bit of wiggle room under the highs of that structure because that's where the demand should be coming out of, roughly. And that's pretty much it. This is still very reasonable. Remember, the, the just to get to the value area high was still nearly a two-hour trade. So, you know, take your profits. This is why we always take our profits, protect our position, especially, you know, when it comes to swing trading because... Things can gap against you. So that is really yeah, no change as long as we're balancing in here. Key level 39.98 for support. Key resistance for 5.20. Do we always have so many tickers? This is a long video. Okay, so MSOs. MSOs also, this is questionable again, right? So remember our trade zone that was shared in this week or the prior week here 
comes into the trade zone, got to our first target, and now we're back in the trade zone again. It should look like this. And now we're back in the trade zone again. But I would be wary, you know? I don't really like this as much. It's it's not the same, you know? Like this, even though the price might be the same if we entered here, the context is now different. When we were entering here for this trade, right? We were we were already had an up move and we were looking for a higher low. At this point now, technically on the weekly time frame, you're looking for a higher low. So I don't hate it, but because we're under 9.37, I don't love it either. So what I would like to see for me personally, I mean, this trade zone is still very reasonable, but for me personally, I would like to see a move back over 9.37 and then we'll look for like a break under 9.37 with no follow through. If it moves back over, we'll buy that move over, assuming that's potentially a daily higher low being set. And then we'll look to get back to here again. Same exact place. Okay, so very, very questionable spot now. Again, this is the key structure here. This staying over this guy at 9.37 opens up all of this. So acceptance under 9.37 is a bit of a red flag. All right, so we shall see space for a lower high under 10.34. Anything under that's going to be good for one. And that's really it. You don't want to lose this low here now, right? Like this low here, it had a break, no follow through, big rip above. So at this point now, you don't want to lose 8.28 as support. Okay, that would be the best case scenario. Best case scenario from here, no break of 8.28, acceptance over 9.37. Okay. Again, potential weekly higher low. That's really it. All right, so hang on a second here. All right. Um, so this one was shared in our community. This is not part of the, these videos. Hang on a second here, let me just hide that. Um, but it is, we were talking about this, right? Remember last week's video was titled, sellers have created a notable change or like whatever, some kind of change. Will they, will they build on it? whatever, I forget, right? The idea was that they created a notable change. And that notable change was this area of daily supply. It was the first time that they've been able to create an area of overhead supply ever since the October low. Hasn't happened since then, right? Or hasn't happened yet since then. And so very notable, but at the same time, we're being mindful that as long as the buyers are holding over this local demand zone, that they're not really too worried about much, right? And so you can see Look at the bodies of these candles, right? Of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The majority of the price action throughout the last eight sessions, not counting the this one, so eight out of the nine last sessions, pretty much entirely under the point of control of key supply and over the point of control of key demand, where the POC has made multiple low of day, right? Low of day, low of day, low of day. Obviously, there's a little break with no follow through. And here, high of day, more or less high of day, more or less high of day. So the market was being very clear letting us know these are the two key structures. And so even though the sellers created this structure, that was a good first step. That means that, okay, now they are trying to, they're playing defense essentially, preventing the buyers from advancing further by building a sideways structure and breaking out. But in order for these sellers to have advanced, they need to trade through an area of demand as well. And so now that's what they're trying to get done here because on Friday, you know, again, it's POC battle, POC battle, POC battle, POC battle. And then finally, mind you, by the way, they fail to get to the POC. Remember, it's always notable what doesn't happen, right? After you bounce from the POC of demand, the buyer should be trying to get back to the POC of supply. To fail doing so was notable. And then to come back down under and find acceptance under 512.78, now they are trying to advance. So next week, if the sellers can maintain under 512.78, that would keep them the most confident. So even if they break 512.78, just like failing to get to the point of control here was notable. If they break 512.78, but don't get to the value area high here, which is at 517.03, that would be a red flag as well. And then if you roll back down under 512.78, that should be the go, for, go sign for more selling. Okay, so 512.78 becomes super, super key uh, next week. And let me show you as well. Hmm. Let me show you as well how you know how we get it done because i i did sell this day like i i just want to show you how you can take this information and then apply it to your trading throughout the week even if you're a day trader because you know obviously we day trade as well so hold on let me let me let me find that session here so that is that should have been a wednesday tuesday it's a tuesday 
Um, here we go. And that is, this is our chat room. It's very, you know, active. Obviously, I'm speaking the most here just because, you know, I'm the one who heads up the features room, but um, very active community. If you want to learn the ropes, come learn with us. You know, it's a, it's a really great community. Uh, we're not trying to sell you Lambos or promises of Lambos or whatever. It's a hard game. We're going to tell you, we're going to tell it to you straight. You know, it's a hard game. It takes a lot of practice, but we'll, you know, we'll help you out through it. So let's see. Um, here we go. Soul VS. And that was probably at like, that, that was probably like 930. I, I, I imagine. Uh, oh, right. Can you see? Let's see. Day was that? That's the nine. Um, let's see. Yeah, so that's a nine thirty. So at nine, oh right, there's a stop first. So I sell the ES, I stop, and then I. Oh, that's weird. Oh right, I say uno mas. That's why. That's how I get back in. So I I sell it at nine thirty. You stop out at nine thirty two, and then like a minute later, I say uno mas one more time. And how that looks like here, why did I do that, right? Because I say it's a play off of, uh, let's see. Uh, where to go? I could have sworn I said play off of daily POC. Oh, yeah, here we go. ESL today was play off of this fella on spot, right? So we just click through this guy and I'm pointing at this guy, right? So the information that we share in these on videos, you can just apply that, you know, to your own operations because you know, all right, well, if we zoom into this day, it was very clear what the setup was, right? Like, okay, so we know that on this day, on Wednesday, on the uh, 9th, we're opening up right at that POC. So on the 9th, we are opening up, let's see, right at that point of control. So why did I sell like right away in the morning is because as soon as you roll back down under the open, what is that? right? If you're going to open up right here and then you roll down under the open, this level is being affirmed, right? And so it's a very, we don't know if it's going to shake out. We don't know if it's going to play out, but the risk is amazing there, right? And we get tons of exits. We stop out. I stopped at the runner. Actually, they actually got me real dirty. The next day they stopped me out before dropping another like 50 points. So this was a day on the ninth. We sell it, take profits, take profits, hold on to a runner, you ride through this overnight session, no big deal. Your runner's already paid for. They pop my runner at 8.30 and then they drop 100 points. But it is what it is. That's trading, right? Anyway, um, so yeah, if you are interested in, uh, you know, joining the community and uh, figuring out the ropes with other experienced traders who are very supportive, then give the community a shot. Um, links in the description below. So anyway, that's pretty much it for spy right so next week again 512.78 507.81 these are the key structures and 507.81 is super key as well because this guy pretty much is a proxy for this gap if you don't trade through this uh, 222 to 29 structure here then you don't fill the gap if you don't fill the gap the change from this gap has not yet been negated and the buyers will be you know pretty comfortable just looking for a weekly higher low lots of space to set another weekly higher low over 466.43 but the best case scenario for these buyers would be to not allow acceptance back under 479.98 which is just where the prior breakout point was the prior all-time high right don't don't want to come back in here because if we don't come back under here then we're not coming back into here if we're not coming back into here then higher prices relative to the prior all-time high are being accepted okay so that's it for spy um let's see that's it for spy and then for the queues uh hang on a second here for the spy i think we have a bigger picture trade zone right yeah this is still reasonable right this is a play looking for this potential to hold all right so bigger picture still a reasonable trade zone same deal here right this guy was based off of this structure holding and so if you're initiating here you take profits up here you're initiating here you take profits in here you can grind out a position here with your stop under here and then if it follows through to the upside, great, right? You've, you've, you've traded yourself into a nice profitable uh, core position. And if you and if it you know turns over and stops you out, that's fine. You probably were able to get risk-free in this sideways structure. So yeah, that's pretty much it, right? This is, I really think this is the only way anybody needs for, for to, to set up trades from a technical perspective. Like from technical sequencing, just looking at horizontal levels through um, areas of supply and demand or via areas of su supply and demand. I really think that's all you need.
right? Because I mean, look at this price action, right? Like look, 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 look at what's, what is going on here, right? If not a battle for this demand zone and this supply zone, look at all these bars, right? They're pretty much smack dab in the middle of this POC and this POC, right? I mean, obviously there's violations of it, but this, these two entire sessions are there. These two entire sessions are there. It's one, two, three, four, five, five entire sessions out of the last nine or so pretty much completely contained by these two structures, you know? So anyway, um, it's really anyone's guess what happens here, right? So the key levels are 437.51 and 444.74. There's no change to this chart unless we start seeing acceptance over 444.74 or 437.51. So that's really it. This is a very muddy looking chart. We're, we are also just looking for a weekly higher low. I mean, it's, it's really more like, at this point, we're probably looking at for a monthly consolidation for a potential higher low play. The weekly chart is also not really seeing that much follow through. Higher low, higher high, limited follow through. Higher low, higher high, no follow through. I would not be surprised to see further consolidation here, right? And again, these buyers are very comfortable as long as they can hold over the prior all time high. The prior all time high is all the way back down at 408.71. Without finding acceptance back under 408.71, these, these buyers will be very comfortable, bigger picture. Okay? If we do see lower lows under 437.51 next week, then eyes on 432.74 and then uh, 430.01. All right. Moving on to the Dow. So the Dow, I believe, uh, the Dow is pretty notably weak. I think it's the furthest off of its highs compared to its peers. Spying it is. All right, so traded through these areas demand. This guy is the next really key area of demand. You can see how much volume was traded here down at 374.78. So even if we bounce next week, these buyers will do no proving if they can't back go, get, can't get back over 383.11. And really they need to get back over 386.72, the point of control of this prior area here. So very notable daily lower high and lower low. Lower high resistance is at 386.08. If we see lower lows next week, eyes on 376.46 and 374.78, I think we have a really big old, yeah, this is a very reasonable trade zone. I would, I would still be very comfortable with this, especially as things get extended here. You're almost flirting with daily oversold conditions. It's the first time it's been oversold in a while. So I like this. This is a very reasonable trade zone for people who trade the Dow. Okay. Um, that is, that's right. That's it. There's nothing else to say about the Dow. Um, all right. So let's see. For the IWM. Uh, no, that's not right. Well, that one was drawn here. So actually, that one worked out quite well as well. But no, our original one was here. Nope. This is a very reasonable trade zone. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Okay. So remember this hedge position. This hedge position that we put on for this trade zone. Uh, with using this trade zone is not hit the target. So at this point, you should at least have your partials off. It looked like it was going to stop us out, but it did not. And so all about 199.26 next week, as long as 199.26 is resistant, then these uh, sellers are going to be very confident. If they're under 199.26, their next objective should be 194.84. Going to be a super key test here. It's obviously all of this price action has been a battle for this structure. And this structure is just this guy. This guy would just contain price here and here and here. Uh, now it's just like, like I said, a battle for it. So I would honestly not be surprised if we were to come all the way back down to here, honestly. But in the short term, I think this is still a very reasonable trade zone. Essentially, you're looking for a move down to the value area low that doesn't see a follow through. And then if you do get fills down here, this third fill down here, if you rally back up, you should take this third fill off before a test of 199.26 because 199.26 is the first place that the buyers should fail if they're, if they're going to fail. We don't know that they'll fail. But if they are going to fail, 199.26 is a very reasonable area. So I think this is still very reasonable. If you want to be a bit more conservative than, you know, adapting it to like this, maybe. For a bigger picture outlook. Like that guy. And then, hang on. Let's make a new group for this though. Yeah. Like this, maybe would be pretty, would be more conservative playing off of this, uh, this point because this guy dictated all of this, right? So something like this, and then look for another, obviously that's not a one R chop. I mean, it's not a uh, uh, two R, right? So it's only 1.5 R, but if they do trade through 199.26, they should try to come here. Let me hide this so it's easier to see. So more aggressive short-term operators, you're dealing with this guy. Bigger picture, more conservative, 
this guy is reasonable. Okay, so I'll just rename this to third grade. Okay, so that's uh, that's it. That's pretty much it for I believe. Well, moving on to the dollar here. So the dollar. All right, so the dollar. This is a super key spot. This is the key supply that has contained price for over a year. And you'll notice rejection from here, rejection from here. And now we pretty much stalled right at the value area low of that key supply. So from here now, we know, okay, these dollar buyers are going to be confident as long as they can hold over 104.745. And if they see higher highs next week, they should be trying to get to 106.335 and then 106.970. So if you're a dollar buyer, something like this, very reasonable. Looking for that pullback entry. Very, very reasonable trying to get there. Okay. Excuse me. Um, that's it. Space for a daily higher low. Anything over 103.645 will be good for one. Weekly time frame also looks pretty healthy. Higher low set at again 103.645. But it's it's all about this demand zone. I mean supply zone. It's all about this guy. It's so clear, right? It's either under this guy or over this guy, otherwise, no change relative to all of this. Okay. And if we do see higher highs next week, over 106.335, that'll probably put pressure on asset buyers. So we'll see. And then finally, the VIX here. Um, all right, so the VIX has now found a lot of acceptance over this uh, low, this October low 15.44. So elevated volatility now, right? This increase, as long as the VIX is holding over 15.44, then we know this is a different environment relative to the October low. So um, that's really it. Yeah, so it's, it's, we'll watch for a spike, I guess. And as long as, again, as long as, this is all I care about right now, for the most part, 15.44. As long as you're finding acceptance from 1544, we're in a higher volatility environment relative to, again, the October low. That's really it. So we'll look to see uh, what the next week brings. Okay. So that's it. Appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for sharing some of your time and energy with me. If you found any of that helpful at all, we would greatly appreciate a like and a subscribe. If you wouldn't mind, helps us out a lot. And otherwise, that's it. Appreciate you sharing some of your time and energy with me. And I hope to see y'all uh, next week. Farewell.